Oh, you're done because you think it's because he's dying and he wants you to laugh. What do you look for in a woman besides an IUD? What would you say? <laughs> Comedians are meant to entertain, but some people take offense and try to stop the jokes. Today we'll watch as these hecklers, who don't want certain things joked about, are dealt with by the comedians they disrupt. In this clip, the heckler decides to interrupt with a half-baked comment, unsure of their own words but fully convinced it's worth sharing with the room. Instead of following the social contract of, you know, not ruining everyone else's night, this genius feels compelled to chime in. It's as if they believe their aimless babbling is going to enlighten us all. Now we're in West Palm Beach or Palm Beach? West Palm Beach. And uh, you said pressure? What'd you say? I'm not sure. You're not sure. Thank you for saying that out loud. I really feel like that got us somewhere. Who the fuck answers the question without knowing in a room of 600 people? Be quiet, right? Like, that's what most people would do, right? Hey, is it raining outside? I don't know! I just want you to know that I don't know either. We're on the same page. We should get to the bottom of this. <laughs> like, she could have just went like, I don't know, I don't know. But well, you screamed it at me. I still don't know who it was. Was it you, miss? Who was it? It was you? Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> Once again, we see a heckler who lacks the self-awareness to realize that nobody came to hear them. It's like they think throwing out random thoughts will somehow elevate the show when really all they're doing is proving why some people should never be handed a microphone or a vote. It's painful to watch, but at least the comedian handles it like a pro, proving once again that the audience's dumbest comments are no match for a seasoned performer. In this clip, the heckler can't help but get in the way of what would have been a smooth, entertaining set. But of course, some people just can't stand to sit quietly when they could be drawing attention to themselves for no good reason. It's like they believe their opinion is some gift to the room, when in reality they're only embarrassing themselves. Look for a woman besides an IUD. What would you say? <laughs> Too much? Oh, okay. You're, you're not in charge. Yeah. <laughs> Comedy might not be for you. Is that... Does anyone here teach special ed? <laughs> anyone else teach special ed? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What's your name, the special ed teacher? Julia. Do some of your students have to take the short bus to school? No. Lucky for them. The short bus is brutal. I had to take the short... Oh, yep. Um. <laughs> Sit tight. What, Juliana? We taxi them in. You taxi them in. Okay, yeah. cool. Do you think that helps me set up this next f***ing job? <laughs> Thank God I got 10 minutes on taxiing in disabled children. May I discuss special ed just one more thing and pay you a giant compliment? Uh, sorry, we don't call it special ed anymore. What do you call it in Utopia? What do you call it? Inclusive education. Inclusive education. Yeah, that'll stop them from getting bullied. Inclusive. <laughs> Julia? Juliana. Juliana. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's my career hinges on saying that correctly. Um, that's my grandmother's name. That's nice. Say hi to Nana. Oh, got a question. Yes. Uh, my middle name is my other grandmother's name. Okay. Wow, that is so boring. All right. What's your other grandmother's name? Anastasia. Anastasia. Wow. I feel like I have Anastasia. That's... I feel like I have Anastasia because that story's so forgettable. All right. Another heckler living in their own delusional little world. It's always the same story. People who think they're Brad Pitt level interesting but really just manage to disrupt everything for everyone. At least the comedian keeps it together because someone in this interaction needed to have a brain. Too bad it wasn't the guy with the camera out proving that, once again, not everyone should be allowed in public spaces. In this clip, the heckler does what they do best. Ruin the atmosphere for everyone because they can't handle not being the center of attention. It's like they're stuck in this endless need for validation. Interrupting and flailing around in the dark, both literally and mentally. No one asked, no one cares. But here they are anyway. Classic case of someone who probably should have stayed home. Thank you for not taking like a thousand pictures, by the way. Just you know, one. I just, no, just did one, but thank you. But you were like, chee, 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 you know? Isn't that your job? <laughs> you are racist, holy shit! <laughs> That's pretty, That's like, I mean, we crossed 20, so like, we should just hang this dude as a group. We should just... It's like, we're 
bigots too. We're just against assholes. That's all we're against. We're just like. Dude, you're not that good looking. Calm down. Right, so. You got too much of a. Dude, you're, you're sitting down like, I am God's gift to Scottsdale. Hey, ladies, my dick is out. Just jump on it. I'm going to have to ask you to leave right now, sir, because I said only one earring per table, so. You should go on the door that says men, by the way. So this should be confused out there. So let's be honest. He's the, he's the guy in the group no one wants to really invite, but he saw it on Facebook and showed up. You can be honest. You can be honest. It's all right. It's all right. Pretty much. <laughs> Like, half the people are laughing, half the people are like, I bet that fucking asshole did sit down the pit. I didn't do it. I didn't sit down the pit. I'm too good to stand. Let me put in my pee crown. <laughs> Exit my body, you're in, you're beneath me. Dude, you're not learning. Everything you say, I'm gonna top it because I'm the shit. So calm down. <laughs> So many new YouTube videos right now. Elliot Chang meets asshole Scottsdale. Wait a minute, now you're fucking turning on me? Fuck all of you! Once again, we have someone who can't shut their mouth long enough to let others enjoy themselves. The heckler's constant interruptions only prove one thing. Some people are just desperate for attention because they didn't get enough as a child. They've gone from being ignored by their parents to being ignored by society, except when they make fools of themselves like this. The comedian handled it, but you have to wonder if we should start charging these people extra for their therapy sessions. In this clip, the heckler's desperation to feel relevant is painfully obvious. The guy rambles on like he's got a PhD in nonsense, barely making sense while interrupting everyone's night. It's like he's determined to share his mental confusion with the room, dragging everyone down with him. This is the kind of person who probably gets his life advice from YouTube comments and then wonders why no one takes him seriously. I didn't know what to do, I just started improvising. I was like, dude, can you please shut the fuck up? Shut the fuck up. This feels like the homeless shelter show, I'm not gonna lie. This feels just as hostile, and I know there's some dirty needles in here. You got it. Thank you. That was a weird thing to clap for, dog. I, you were clapping for, you were trying to get a clap going, and it didn't work at all. The pigeons, well, what is your problem? <laughs> what, were you touched too much or not enough? I don't know what the fuck your problem is. But you just keep shouting out. I'm giving you the attention you want now. Your parents should have left you in the forest. They found you and you thin-lipped hack. Be quiet. What do you want? What did you say no to? Was that homeless crackhead talking to pigeons a friend of yours? You kind of remind me of a bird, the way you won't stop chirping. Will you focus on me? Look, nobody's on your side here. I am. I want to entertain you. You were just a raging bitch, and you won't stop talking. You got a little smile on that one. You got a little kink shame, don't you, slut? I like it. This is fun. Dude, I can't even understand what you're saying. That's what's bothering me. Can you turn on the subtitles or talk quieter, please? <laughs> Boris, just shut the fuck up. I don't even know which one he was talking because it's dark, but like, I'm, 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 I'm upset. Okay, well, you are a horrible friend, sir, and a bad snitch. And you would never make it in Nazi Germany, you fucking... You just said that guy. That fucking lad. You can't even be to that. I'm catching like every fourth word, and so is everybody else. Are you Irish? Yes! Yeah, that was good. See, they're not even drunk. This is just normal Irish people. Another heckler who thinks his unfiltered stream of garbage is what the world needs right now. He's talking about addiction, Queensland, and who knows what else. All in a bid to make himself feel like he's part of the show. If this is how he normally acts, it's no wonder his friends look embarrassed to be near him. 
Maybe next time he'll figure out the real solution to his problems, staying quiet. In this clip, we've got a heckler who's clearly confused about what a comedy show is. He's trying to make himself part of the act, as if the audience paid to hear his random, awkward commentary. These types never know when to shut up, do they? It's like he thinks he's making some grand contribution when, really, everyone wishes he'd take a hint and just vanish. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. My man, you told her in one set, I'll put my dick in your drink. <laughs> Another sad example of someone mistaking their own importance, this heckler is trying to force his way into the spotlight even though he's barely stringing coherent thoughts together. It's painful to watch, but typical for someone who probably feels more at home with participation trophies than actual accountability. Maybe next time he'll stay in his lane, quietly. In this clip, we have a heckler who just can't figure out when to keep her mouth shut. She probably thinks she's helping, but in reality she's derailing the show with irrelevant nonsense. You know the type. Always needs to be the center of attention no matter how painful it is for everyone one else. It's almost like she thinks she's at a group therapy session instead of a comedy club. There's a ghost in the room tonight. <laughs> Was that? Was me, sorry. Oh, it's you. Cool. Can you all see her as well? <laughs> Hi, mate. You okay? I'm fine. My dad thought he was dying. He wanted me to laugh. Oh, yeah. your dad got you to it's because he's dying and he wants you to laugh. No pressure. <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. I'll, I'll... Oh, you're not laughing now, so you want to leave? Are oh, you going to go? That's okay. No worries, that's cool. Um, cool. Uh, no, I'm not trying to do that at all. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Bye, sorry about that. <laughs> Susan, do you want to go back on? Thank you, mate. No, 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 thank you, though, thank you. Um, no worries, that's cool. So, um. Right? Uh, what <laughs> Wait, is that even filming this gig as well? Right? Just... 
Oh, I know. Oh, I get to remember this. <laughs> but my God, you'll never hear a headline like that. Um, <laughs> Jesus, fuck. I mean, she could have just called me a faggot and gone with it. <laughs> It's, um, it's, it's going to be the one I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any questions, by the way? <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm okay. I am fine. I'm all right. I'm going to have a bath. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make some toast for it. Um, <laughs> There it is, another heckler who couldn't resist trying to make the show about herself. This is what happens when people with no sense of timing or self-awareness think they can contribute. Inclusive education? Sure, just don't include her in anything remotely entertaining. Next time, maybe just sit quietly and let the professionals handle the jokes. Uh, <laughs> what? You had a heart transplant? Well, this ain't the forum for that, did you, daddy? You should be, oh, this is still, hey, I mean, we're glad that you made it, but we kinda not right now. <laughs> All of us ain't glad, but, but we're glad you made it. You know, we glad you're here, but like, you know. <laughs> Your heart murmured, but you're talking loud. <laughs> Uh, comedian in this race, heckler with the heart <laughs> That's gonna be the caption. We're going 300 k We're going crazy. Wow, we're doing numbers off this one. We're doing numbers. Don't you get a heart attack. No, laugh, drink first, and then laugh. We can't do a heart attack and a seizure. And y'all know the liability insurance. They cover none of this, okay? And there it is. Someone who feels the need to share their medical chart with the entire audience. It's wild how some folks just can't resist the urge to overshare. Like we're all at a therapy session. Maybe next time leave your health updates for Facebook, where someone might actually care. Comedy shows are for jokes, not pity parties. In this clip, a lady disrupts the comedian with her incessant chatter, thinking she can outsmart him. Instead, she becomes the punchline. Her attempts to engage fall flat, showing she doesn't grasp the essence of stand-up comedy. Instead of letting the man work, she turns the spotlight on herself, making a fool of both her and Owa and the audience. Be quiet, be quiet. Be quiet. Me be quiet. <laughs> this is my show, be for the last minute, but you actually have, this is fucked up me say, but you actually have a nice, you have a nice energy, so I'll answer your question. Go ahead, madam, what's up? So, if you know all that. If I know all what? you I've been talking for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you got the giggles, bitch, that's weird. No, no, no. Now I'm around, go ahead. I'll let you, I'll, I swear to God, I'll let you ask, go ahead. you know all that. Yes, ma'am. How did you pick up on it before you have to ask somebody that awkward-ass question? How do I pick up? Yeah, that's uh, how I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah. What I'm you saying is, yes, ma'am. If you know all that you know, that uh, question you know, doesn't that, make. I <laughs> want you to let me finish talking. Yes, ma'am. If, if you know all that you know, yeah. then how do you know so much? If I know all that I know, how do I know so much? <laughs> You're talking like a parrot that just learned English. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna need security when I leave because she she gonna. simple. When you step into a comedy club, you enter someone else's domain. If you can't handle the heat, you shouldn't poke the bear. The comedian's response highlights the absurdity of her interruption. She walked in with an agenda, but all she got was a lesson in humility. Next time, maybe she'll think twice before thinking her two cents is worth more than the actual act on stage. In this clip, we have a heckler who's somehow managed to turn their messy personal life into a public therapy session. Imagine being so self-absorbed that you think sharing your lack of standards is going to win over a crowd. This person clearly missed the memo that oversharing doesn't make you quirky. It makes you sound like a walking disaster. And, uh, 
And she did the line, she hit me with, she's like, I'd invite you over, but my place is kind of a mess. And I was like, yeah, I can work past that. That's not a huge obstacle. We're not trying to get laid. We can, we can work past that. Like, I'm going to walk into her apartment and be like, absolutely not. <laughs> we fold these sheets, maybe we can talk, but I'm not talking. It's a dirty. What's your, what's your line? What's my line? What's your line? I had, a, you I had, another, I had another few lines planned for this joke. This is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> What's my line that I don't cross? Yeah, like how dirty can she be? <laughs> how dirty? I don't care about a film. I usually draw the line at women who interrupt my shows. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> but you should still definitely fuck her, dude. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't give a why, why would I give a shit about a mess? If a woman is if a woman's willing to have sex with me, I'm just going to assume her whole fucking life is in shambles. Why would I care? Cockroaches? Cockroaches? Yeah, cockroaches? I guess that's fucking gross. I don't know. <laughs> this is a weird conversation. Uh, I was just planning to tell a joke about this. I really analyze the inner thoughts of how far I'd go. And there you have it, proof that some people have no shame airing their dirty laundry, literally and figuratively. If you're more focused on cleaning up your bedroom than your act, maybe it's time to reconsider your priorities. At least get a life together before expecting applause. In this clip, we meet a heckler who thinks they can disrupt the show while somehow maintaining a sense of respect. It's almost impressive how someone can misunderstand the social contract of comedy. Instead of being that annoying drunk yelling from the back, this heckler tries to act like a sage offering life advice. Spoiler alert, it's not working. I'm gonna put some points on your driver's record. Look, they talking about the points. They going over notes. They were like, were you at that point? Oh, you ain't at that point yet, Quay. Oh. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. That's what's up. I appreciate that. I, even though it was a heckle, you, you, you did it respectfully. You, did, you, know, you gave me my proper respect, and so I got to fuss with it. You had a point in your life where you just, you know. Yeah. So there it is. A heckler who thinks they're helping, but only ends up showing how clueless they are. Respect in comedy comes from knowing when to shut up and let the professionals do their thing. If you're at a point in your life where you think yelling at a comedian is a good idea, maybe it's time to reevaluate your choices. Get your act together before you start critiquing others. In this clip, we hear a heckler who seems to think they're adding to the show by interjecting with some aggressive comments. Instead of appreciating the performance, they decide to throw shade and make it personal. It's a classic case of someone trying to be the center of attention, thinking they're clever when they're just annoying. Good looking girls know four words. My girlfriend is gorgeous. That bitch know four words. Come up here, let us see you, since you thank you. I know you left your ass at home, bitch. Yeah, I see your motherfucking whoopee cushion by the ass. Yeah, bitch, you got them goddamn old navy shorts on. Come get the fuck up out of there. Hey, motherfucker, this your best outfit, bitch? Shit, I. Go eat some crab legs, yo. Tell your nigga to buy you a drink, man. You over there. You ain't even got no buzz, you just talking out of turn, bitch. You gotta pull on potato chips and Reese's cups tonight. Your ass, your nigga is bogus as fuck for letting you come out of the house with that bullshit on. I bet you got some sandals on, don't you, bitch? I can tell you ain't got no clothes, no shoes on the way you talk. Let me see your foot, bitch. Show me your foot. Cause I know you got some sandals on with them unmanicured ass feet, bitch. Let me see them unmanicured ass toes, ho. You fucking gluten allergy ass bitch. <laughs> let me see, let me see you, bitch. Stand up. Turn around. Let us see all that ass you ain't got. You got some gluten lemon under that dress, bitch. Yeah, come on up, come on up here. Let me see you closer. Let me, let me see your ass, you fucking pale bitch. You ain't worth it, bitch. The fuck you drove up here in, huh? No, she's good. I, I promise she's good with me, but when the headliner come on, she gotta shut the fuck up. But with me, I enjoy this shit because I love putting white women in their place. Especially these opinionated ass white bitches. Shut the fuck up and be a white woman. You, you're winning in life. What the fuck are you doing? If you're white and you ain't doing right, something wrong, nigga. 
If you want to get fucked, just holler at me after the show. <laughs> Why are you so angry? I want to know. Why are, you, why are you so upset that Baltimore looks better than L.A. or it does better than L.A.? Let's hear what you have to say. There's, 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 there's a team involved. You shut your whole ass up. <laughs> because the whole time this bitch been talking, you didn't say shit, and now you want to say shit when this bitch shut up. So you shut your... Bitch, you get spooned that night, nigga. Shut your ass up. <laughs> You get spooned that night, bitch. She order for you when y'all go out. Order this nigga another beer. <laughs> What we see here is a heckler losing their grip on reality. Instead of laughing or enjoying the moment, they choose to lash out, revealing more about their own insecurities than about the show. Comedy thrives on connection, not confrontation. If you can't handle a few jokes and decide to make it personal, maybe it's time to step back and examine why you're so bitter. In this clip, we see a heckler trying to derail the show with some misplaced bravado. Instead of engaging with the comedian's performance, he turns to petty insults and arrogance. This kind of behavior not only disrupts the vibe, but reveals his own insecurity securities and desire for attention. It's a desperate attempt to play the tough guy, but it's more cringeworthy than impressive. When my dad passed, I wanted to create something that would, would you say? Do you yell, don't fart? What? I wish I did. You wish you did. I, I wish, I wish a couple things right now. And I tell you, sir, you, you don't want my wishes granted. My neither. You're neither. Okay, here's where you, you don't talk. I've been waiting all night. You, you've been waiting all night to, yes. to, to be an asshole? Yes. You were looking for an opportunity. To be that one guy. To be that one guy. To be the one guy that didn't want to be the one guy, but the one guy. The, I, I understand drugs are legal here, they're not mandatory. Did you take all of them? You're not being the one guy who's not being the one guy. You're being that one fucking guy. And not the way that you think you're being the one guy. You're being the one guy where everybody else is rolling their eyes being like, that fucking guy. That's what you want to be? That's what you aspire to be? Just once. Just once? Don't knock it till you try it, man. Don't knock it till you try it. Don't, don't knock it. So you want to, don't make fun of something until you try it? Have you ever tried being kicked out of a show? <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. Because it's about to fucking happen, sir. So. Here's where you learn your lesson. Don't be the hamster that keeps going for the cheese and getting shocked every fucking time. Stay down. What this heckler fails to realize is that comedy is about connection, not conflict. He wants to be the center of attention, but instead, he just comes off as a fool. Instead of embracing the laughs and good energy, he chooses to be the one guy everyone else rolls their eyes at. There's a lesson here. If you can't take a joke, don't try to make one at someone else's expense. Being obnoxious won't win you any fans. It'll only get you kicked out. In this clip, the heckler goes for shock value but ends up sounding like a clown. Instead of keeping it clever, he leans into cheap shots and off-topic rants. His comments aimed at the comedian fall flat and show his desperate need for attention. It's a common tactic among those who can't engage with humor or wit. They resort to insults and distractions, thinking they can steal the spotlight. Are you ever seen Donald Trump's Twitter? Yeah. That guy is a fucking moron, like, actually, I think he has syphilis, I'm telling you. <laughs> Just look towards me, point him. I'm gonna buy you a beer. You're gonna buy me a beer? Okay, thanks, bro. Can you not do it in the middle of a fucking joke next time? <laughs> okay, mate. Like, we can do this, like, yeah, I'll be back in a second. Okay. I assumed you would be. I didn't think you'd be able to pop down the fucking road. Oh, I've been about 15 minutes, I've got those cheaper prices down the road. I'm just gonna be back in a fucking set. Who's mad is that? I'll be back in his own fucking home. Doesn't he take a while to get him sometimes? Like an hour later, he comes home with a round. Like, I'm gonna do a song, who's here, a song? I really do appreciate 
appreciate it. You know I get free beers anyway, though. <laughs> You wanted to buy me a beer, you stick calm, appreciate that, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck it. What? I'm not buying you. You're not buying me another one. I get them for free, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but is that like a respect thing? Is that like, oh, you lost my respect? No more beers for you. Did I ask you what your job was? Yeah, I've got a bad memory. You sell paint. What? Sniffs paint for a living. <laughs> How much is your paint? <laughs> choking. Don't understand how a lot of girls like being choked. You only find this out as you don't get older. Yeah. No, they do. You're shaking your head. And girls don't like being choked. I'm not saying all of them. I'm not saying you go up to the street. Like, but you love it. <laughs> I'm getting at. No, no, you're not strangling them, you're not trying to kill them. I, mean, I think we're thinking about different things here, okay? Not strangulation. This isn't Dexter shit, okay? This is this is law and order. This is How wide the neck's your fucking That is a wide neck, brother. That is a wide neck. She's got some traps on her, fuck you. Because you know this law is more like that. This heckler's approach reveals a lot about the state of comedy today. Instead of celebrating laughter, he tries to provoke outrage. He confuses disrespect for humor and thinks he's being edgy, but really he just shows his ignorance. If you can't stand up to a comedian with intelligence and charm, maybe it's time to sit down and shut up. Comedy should bring us together, not tear us apart with weak attempts at bravado. In this clip, the heckler shows just how out of touch he really is. Instead of enjoying the comedy, he insists on dragging his personal issues into the mix, thinking his interruptions are clever. He's like that annoying friend who insists on sharing their problems while everyone else is trying to have a good time. He thinks he's the star of the show, but all he does is highlight his lack of self-awareness. <laughs> Did you just say go back to the therapist? Yeah. <laughs> what makes you think I left them? <laughs> Well, I'm seeing her on Thursday. Um, what would you like me to bring up exactly? <laughs> no, please, continue. <laughs> Do you come out to comedy shows a lot? No. Clearly. <laughs> this is not how they work. <laughs> okay. Are you a dad? Yes. Are you in therapy? No. Yes? No, then shut the fuck up. <laughs> How about you get a therapist and tell them you can't shut the fuck up at a comedy show? <laughs> I have all those feelings, I don't know where to put them. <laughs> My wife won't move, fucking listen to me, then maybe this bitch on stage with the microphone. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> you know what you should have said? That would have been better. You should have been like, go back to where you came from. That would have been better. <laughs> the audacity! I can't tell you who's in therapy is your kids, for sure. <laughs> This guy's behavior is a prime example of why some people should just stay home. Therapy is meant to help, not turn you into a nuisance in public. When a comedian is on stage, the audience should be there to laugh, not to air their grievances. If you're too fragile to handle a few jokes, maybe you need a different kind of therapy, or at least a lesson in manners. Comedy is about connection, not turning every moment into a pity party.